And welcome back to another episode of the Association Spotlight Series. I'm Lake Morehouse. Uh, thanks for joining us today. We have another legislative short for you, We're joined by our CEO, Mark Drennan. Mark, thanks for taking the time. Lake, good to be back again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, today we were just going to talk about uh, continuum of care, I believe was our, our topic today, kind of what that means and currently how it's affected the system in West Virginia. Yeah, it's it's hard to describe the continuum of care when we're when we're thinking about you know behavioral health services, but sure. um, you know when what we like to talk about when we're talking about individuals that may have and we've talked about in past shorts, uh, individuals with intellectual developmental disabilities or mental illness that may end up you know using the mental hygiene system. Um, you know sometimes we talk about in our world about the least restrictive alternative. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and ultimately, you and I and, and the rest of the folks watching probably live in that least restrictive alternative. We have a job and a means of transportation. We have a, you know, a home and we can come and go freely as we please. Um, but there are some individuals that, especially folks that we care for that have, you know, maybe intellectual and developmental disabilities or, uh, you know, serious persistent mental illness that, uh, that need extra care in their daily living. And uh, so our ultimate goal is that someone might live independently like you or I mm -hmm. through the use of medication or outpatient therapy. And then you have the next level where people may live in a, in a group home with two or three other people. I think we've talked about that a mm -hmm. little bit in, in our past videos. Uh, and then you may r rise to another level. You know, in the IDD world, we, we talk about uh, intermediate care facilities for persons with mental retardation. And so that, that in West Virginia, those are about eight beds uh, facility. They have a little more intensive staffing, a little more routine. Um, but now I think we make a huge jump to, uh, which is causing some problems in our system, to state hospitals, or what we refer to as diversion hospitals. So we're diverting people from going into a state hospital to, um, you know, like our members, uh, you know, Highland Hospital mm -hmm. here in, in Charleston, for example. And, uh, you know, I think we need some steps in between. Okay. And when we don't have those other services, it sort of backs up our system. So you may have someone that's, that's not really appropriate for a, for a three-bedroom, a three-bed um, um, home because of some of the, the behaviors and dangerousness that may be going on because they're, they're, they're not... Um, they're not being treated at the proper level. Sure. So they end up going all the way to the top to the state hospital and then there's really no place for them to go. They're not yet ready to return back to that three-person group home so they maintain and they stay in the state hospital and sort of languish there. Okay. And what they do is they take up, um, they take up a bed and you've, we've had uh, some reports in the news, there's been um, some testimony that goes on at the legislature that says how inappropriate that is. Mm -hmm. um, and so in order to address that, we need to, to create some, some, some places um, that kind of fit in between that. You know, one of those bills we've talked about before, I think is House Bill 3115. Right. It's a really important bill. And, you know, some of us took a field trip to look at a, at a program in Indiana that, that uh, was, a, was a 20-bed facility that uh, had a really high number of staff on a campus that was that was spread ac across a, a couple of buildings, a gymnasium, and all kinds of different mm -hmm. neat stuff for for folks. And what they had was a, a full-time behavioral support professional that designed behavioral plans for uh, these individuals, so that the ultimate goal is to get them back, step down, back down into um, back down into the community. So. So what happens there is you have, in that particular facility that we toured, you had seven staff on shift at any given time. And so if you had one person in that was experiencing a crisis, then you, know, you, you could address some staff to that individual in the crisis and you could remove the, the rest of the, the, the home's res, um, occupants to other parts of the building, maybe the gymnasium or the art room or the theater, and, and, or they could go into their own private uh, bedrooms but um, when you're in a in a home where there's just three people and maybe one or two staff it ends up that the whole home becomes you know a crisis right and that's not fair to the other people that are living in the home and it also applies to our to our children's system as well and uh, you know we've you know ultimately 
you know, we think children should be raised by their parents. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we have a situation where we have thousands of kids that are being raised by the state of West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And we don't have the continuum of care, I don't think, that's necessary to, to appropriately serve all those kids. Okay, so yeah, that's, it's kind of affecting the whole system, really. It's a, a domino effect or a, the nucleus of it all, if you will. And uh, this, because there's current legislation happening uh, by the lawmakers that are they're working on here in West Virginia about kind of surrounding continuum of care. I, there, there are s several pieces of legislation that, mm -hmm. are, that are looking to address the symptoms. Okay. And I think a lot of times what we see and what lawmakers see is their constituents are noticing the symptoms of our lack of a, of, a, of a strong continuum of care. We serve a lot of children out of state. We even serve some adults uh, at out of state and specialty facilities. And as this workforce crisis uh, permeates the whole country, as the, the issue with, with mental illness and, and children being raised in the system due to a, you know, a lot of our opioid crisis that's really reached, that started here in West Virginia and Appalachia and really went to all across the country. Mm -hmm. We're seeing those kids now that, that have been affected by that being raised in a system, not just in West Virginia, but in other states. So um, we have kids that may be living in, in hospitals for, for unfortunately years. And, and sometimes mm -hmm. these are acute facilities right. where you're supposed to go for 10 days. And we have some kids that are staying there for a year or more. And that's not appropriate. You know, when you're 12, no. 13, 14 years old, those are important years of your milestones where you you expect to be with your with your peers and right. not in a in a hospital institution. So we've got to have a continuum of care that that supports them and gets them to where they need to be quicker than than we are today. Yeah, well, sounds good. Uh, I think that's all we have for today, Mark. Uh, see, you, we'll see you next week uh, for another short, and we'll uh, appreciate the time, and we'll get back with you next week. All right, all right, Thanks. Mark. Thanks.